Okay, let me just start by introducing Roland Smith to you. Um, he's from Berkshire Archaeology and he's going to tell you all about the work he's involved in and give you a chance to ask him lots of questions. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Um, so, yeah, this is me, Roland Smith, um, uh, Archaeological Officer with Berkshire Archaeology. And this is my role as local government archaeological officer. Not exactly a thrilling title, is it, really? Is it, you think, oh, crikey, that sounds a little bit, little bit dull. Um, but, it, but it's not. Um, I work for Reading Borough Council, and uh, I work for them as their archaeological advisor. So I give them advice primarily within the planning, um, within the planning environment. So. I look at planning applications that come into to Reading Borough Council and I assess them for any archaeological implications that they might have and I give my advice. And it is, it is, it is my advice that will frequently lead to uh, archaeological work. Um, so that's what, uh, yeah, um, that's what basically that describes there. And I guess that the, really the key point of and the key importance of my role is, is the bottom bit there, is that the majority of work that archaeological professional practices out, out there, such as Oxford Archaeology, Wessex Archaeology, Museum of London Archaeology, all those organisations that I think you're probably broadly familiar with, 95% um, of the work that they do comes from advice that people like myself give within the planning environment. So just kind of to give that a bit of, bit of context, just some statistics, statistics, statistics and uh, whatever, just, just to, so there are over um, half a million planning applications in Britain every year, about 4% of those uh, have a, some kind of archaeological Im implication, yeah. and then 10,000 of those actually result in some form of archaeological investigation on an annual basis. So that might be a very small um, archaeological watching brief on a, on a single new dwelling, or it might be major infrastructure work, major investigations on, for example, uh, High Speed 2. So, um, as I said, the importance of that is that really three quarters of professional archaeologists in Britain today are employed in the archaeological work that comes out of that advice. That's about 5,000 archaeologists. So, we're looking, you know, the current profession has about 7,000 uh, archaeologists. So, the vast majority of them are in development led archaeology. Just a few. Sort of interesting statistics for how much is the value of all that archaeological work? Well, it's over two hundred million pounds a year, and all of that is facilitated by two hundred and seventy people uh, like my, like myself. So, what's the actual reality of my day-to-day -day job? I get lists of planning applications. I don't just do Reading Borough Council. I also advise at Bracknell Forest and uh, Woking and Borough Council. <coughs> So I, I, I review planning applications, I then give my advice in written form to the local planning authorities and um, assuming that they take my advice, because they're not necessarily obliged to, they generally do, thank goodness, um, uh, uh, programmes of archaeological work will take place and my role is, to, is, as well as to give that advice, is to scope the archaeological work, so to decide what, what type of archaeological response is required um, and what form that might take. So what form of exploratory investigation might be appropriate such as um, geotechnical investigations or exploratory trial trenching or, or, or whatever. And then when that archaeological fieldwork takes place, my responsibility is to ensure that it's done correctly, it follows the agreed scope of works and it maintains professional standards. So woe beside anybody that fails to meet professional standards. Just the image, um, an entirely previously unknown causeway, early Neolithic causeway enclosure, um, just south of Slough. Um, 
only found because the archaeological response was to monitor the stripping um, of a gravel quarry in advance. So we had no idea it existed until it was exposed um, in advance of gravel extraction, now being excavated by Wessex Archaeology. And the segments of the causeway enclosure are littered with uh, early Neolithic debris, animal bone, pottery, flint, etc. You know, a, a wonderful, wonderful sight. And so the following day, um, obviously it's a professional obligation to ensure that all archaeological res work results in publication, be that a, on the one hand a grey literature report, or be it a formal publication in an archaeological journal or a monograph. So uh, I'm involved in setting the scope of that work and ensuring that it's completed. Ultimately, the results will go into the historic environment record, which I should think you're probably familiar with. <coughs> Sorts of nods, yeah. Um, and ultimately achieve the public benefit of the exercise by making the results available to a wider audience. And uh, so that's what, that's what I do. But I, I think the one, the one point I really want to make really to you um, today is that um, I have been a professional archaeologist for my entire career. I graduated in 1982, sounds an awfully long time ago now, and having graduated I entered the profession, I'm still in it and I will be by the time I retire, which is uh, not, not that far, not that far away. So I, I just really just want to say you can do it, you can enter the profession have a successful career you know, as a professional archaeologist. This just shows you, I don't know whether any of you have seen this before, this just shows the number of professional archaeologists working in Britain over time, starting in 22, going up to 2012, so it's a little bit, out, it's, it's a little bit behind. So I had the good, good fortune to graduate down here, obviously just as bad as this was about to happen, which is my good fortune. But I think the point to make is that that is continuing to go up to the professional has grown exponentially and it continues to do so now. So what I would say to you is if you do want to enter the profession, keep the faith because it can be done. Um, one small point to make out is that there are a couple of little dips and the, the, the reality is, is it's, it's all that the majority of um, archaeologists work in development-led archaeology, that does mean as a profession we are subject to the, the, the dips and the rises of the economy. So you know, these two dips relate to recession. So that's a bit of, that's a, bit of a negative, but I think you've got, we've once got to be honest about it, that that is, that is, a, that is a, a, a reality. But as I say, I, I have practiced all my life. Um, I now own my own home, I've got three children, I've had a granddaughter um, that was just born uh, a few months ago, so it can be done. Um, and I've even had the good fortune to own a share in a racehorse, and that's, uh, is, that a, is that a sign of success? I don't know, I think it probably is. So this is the, the beautiful Paco's Angel on her penultimate outing at Pontefract in Yorkshire, unfortunately uh, not successful on that day. Um, and uh, uh, it was only a day or so, uh, um, uh, after the preceding, the race preceding this, that she was uh, she was re retired. But uh, yeah, what I would say is, yeah, you can you can do it. You can have a successful you know, career um, throughout your lifetime. And that's all I was going to say. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, come on. <laughs> Has anybody worked for for a Wessex or an Oxford archaeology? Like yes, you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked for Brian Young and Mark. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and what was your My position? I was an archaeologist. I graduated their trainee program. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah so, um, I had the experience, I thought, like, that thing and complaining some kind of like scenarios where people were laid off. Yes. Like that does happen, but however like it's literally like probably like no one the month before I start writing again. Yeah. Like it's very fluctuating right now due to yes. political climates which needless to say yes. going on. Yes. 